Morning gang, so it's December, it's cold, it's dark, and it's getting harder and harder and harder to stick to or at least kind of adhere to our goals and make good choices. At least I'm finding so myself, I don't know about you, but I'm assuming because you and I are quite similar, is that you know, you're going to be struggling with the, the extra chocolates that are lying around in the office. And generally, um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fully convinced that Elliot is part piglet. Um, the, the number of mince pies and like quality street chocolates and um, what are those little long um, twiglet chocolate things called matchmakers. The num- number of these that he has eaten over the last few weeks astounds me. And, you know, when it comes down to an individual approach to nutrition, what we have to bear in mind is that most of it happens up in here. So you can convince yourself of anything that you want to, to justify having one or having two, or oops, I've eaten the whole packet, you know? So I, as an ex-binge eater, as someone who has struggled with balance and struggled with just having one versus having everything and all of them, I can I can tell you right now that I'm I'm struggling at the moment with the kind of mental side of things. So my approach to December is going to be about being accountable. So I am going to make a renewed effort with my fitness power. I'm going to get back on there and I'm going to account for my calories, my macros, and set myself some small calorie macro targets. So this isn't about restriction. This isn't about me trying to cut my calories. This is just about me saying, if you don't do this, Nicola, you're probably going to end up sneaking in chocolate after chocolate after chocolate and matchmakers and all these kind of nice um, festive things that we do. We seem to justify just lying, leaving around the house um, in December, whereas the rest of the year you wouldn't find those things in my living room. Um, so if you're struggling with this, um, if you find that you're kind of gravitating toward the, the junk food, the snacky Christmas food, then find a way to keep yourself accountable because If we don't account for these extra calories, if we don't account for this food that we're eating, it's a slippery slope, it's a spiral back into our old habits. We're still relatively new at this habit change thing, okay? You and I, we're we're working on this journey together, we're we're making these changes together, and I, I need you to tell me if you're feeling stuck or if you're struggling, because if I don't know, if I don't know what you're going through and how you're feeling, then I can't help you to to work through it and find a strategy that works for you. So accountability works for me. If I have to sit there and type in that I ate 10 chocolates, then it's probably going to um, prevent me or at least maybe make me eat less than 10 chocolates. Um, you know, because at the end of the day, this, this is Christmas. This is a time of year where we have um, social events and parties and things to go to that we really don't want to be feeling guilty about. So if you, if you want to have a mince pie, then that's totally fine. You know, mince pies aren't the devil. But having two mince pies, three mince pies, four mince pies, a whole packet of mince pies, that's where things start to slide, okay? So if you can be accountable to the things that you are eating, then it makes it more likely that you'll, you, you'll control yourself a bit better around these festive treat kind of tempting foods. Okay, so if you're feeling stuck, if you're struggling, if you feel like you're in the same boat as me, where you're kind of tempted, but you know you don't really want to because, you know, it leads you down that kind of slippery slope, then talk to me about balance, okay? You know by now that I don't go down the route of heavy restriction, and I won't be telling you not to eat anything uh, that you enjoy. It will just be a case of me keeping you accountable, you keeping yourself accountable, and factoring these things in so that you can enjoy them without feeling guilty and without gaining loads of weight over the festive period because it's it's something something ridiculous like um i I don't know the statistics off the top of my head you could probably research if you wanted to but there's something ridiculous like for all the people that gain weight over christmas generally don't um get rid of it all over the new year so say if you gain like eight pounds over the festive period and then you might lose four pounds or five pounds over January and, and beyond, but then be, like kind of beyond that, you just kind of more or less stay the same. If this happens year on year on year, but it gets, for example, just a uniform number of gain, so let's say 10, it's easier to think about. So gain 10 pounds, lose five pounds. Um, so every, if that happens year on year on year, over a period of say 10 years, you're gaining 50 pounds, okay? Because five, you know, getting 10 minus five in January, but you're still holding on to five stubborn pounds, 
that happens every single year, you know, you've got an accumulative um, weight gain there over a period of a decade. So you can see how this kind of stuff does, is, is relevant, it does matter, okay? So accountability will hopefully stop the excessive weight gain. I'm not saying that I'm not gonna gain weight over December. I probably will, you know, I'm, I'm outside and doing less because it's cold, you know, I'm eating a bit more because the food is nice. <laughs> And so I'm, I'm realistic about it. I'm not worried about gaining weight. I just want, I don't want to lose control. And for me, that's, that's the main thing. Well, as an ex-binge eater, as someone who has struggled with these things in the past, and obviously admitting to you right now that I'm still struggling a bit mentally and emotionally with these things, I have to make sure that I stay in control. That doesn't mean not eating, eating anything fun. That just means being accountable for those fun things. Okay, so I hope that I've got my point across to you today. I hope that me sharing my struggles with you has helped you to see that you're not alone, that you, you know, you're not the only person that's finding this hard. You know, even, even trainers and coaches and athletes and everyone, everyone finds this stuff hard. We're all, we're all fighting our own battles when it comes to food and exercise and balance and making the right choices. But you just have to know that you're not alone and that if you need someone to talk to, I'll be here.